I started working in audio at, um, at a little church that I grew up in. It was nothing special. We had a Mackie 24, um, but I loved doing it. So at the end of high school, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, I thought, you know what, I want to keep doing that. Um, and so I went to a community college and got an associate of music degree in recording, uh, recording technology. And then I transferred to a four-year and completed my Bachelor of Music there. After college, I moved here, sold clothes at the mall, interned at various studios and with various engineers, um, and eventually ended up uh, with a essentially full-time assistant gig with a mixing engineer here in Nashville. Um, and I worked for him uh, for five years before branching out on my own. Most of my work is in black gospel, and uh, and that crosses over to R&B uh, semi-frequently as well. I got started in that genre uh, because when I was looking for internships, um, I called a worship leader at a church that I had interned at before, um, and he said, you need to hang out with this guy named John Yash for the summer. He's, he's the guy. Um, and I said, okay, cool. So I called him. John Yash is an amazing mixing engineer. He's, uh, I think, seven-time Grammy Award winner, um, and he does all the top names in gospel music. So working for him for five years really honed my, my skills in mixing gospel. Um, it also gave me credits on those albums, and it also developed relationships with the producers who are making those albums. Uh, so when I broke out on my own, some of those producers came to me with their lower budget stuff. Some of those producers came to me when Yash was booked up and needed something quickly. Um, they came to me for vocal tuning and editing. They came to me um, and that allowed me to drive more work, really. Um, and since then, I've uh, had the opportunity to work on several number one gospel albums, four so far this year, and as well as um, I've worked on four Grammy-nominated albums. Um, none of them won yet, but hey. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's sort of what I've I've been doing in gospel and R&B music. I started using Adam Audio because uh, my former boss, John Yash, uses Adam Audio um, speakers as well. He also has the A7s. So I, I was turned on to them because as an assistant, I listen to them every single day. He bought a second pair of them so that I, as the assistant, could use the same monitors in the B room while he was mixing. I could be prepping and knowing what it sounded like. I drive these things hard, um, especially for short amounts of time, because I really want to know what this sounds like and what the client's going to hear. Everyone likes to listen to their own music loud. Um, so I need to listen to it loud as well and know like what's really happening. Um, and I can drive these things as loud as I want in this space. And, and they, don't, they don't break up. They, they sound phenomenal at, at, at as loud as I want to listen to them. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I don't I don't have a need for a bigger speaker in this room. You know, Adam makes some great bigger speakers, and and I just don't even have a need for them. These, these you know, near field, mid field speakers are my main speakers. I didn't realize that my sub seven was underpowered, really, for what I was doing in this room. And again, none of this stuff was major. I'd been mixing records in here for, for a while at that point, and um, mostly was comfortable, but there were some times when I didn't feel secure in what I was hearing. And that really, for the Atom A7Xs, you should have a bigger sub so that when you're really driving the speakers, your sub can keep up. I brought it in, calibrated it a little bit, and sat down and started listening to records. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, that just, I feel better with that. Um, it, it felt safer. <laughs> it felt more secure. Like, I knew what I was hearing better. And I called them and I said, man, I'd love to keep this thing. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not giving it back. So, uh, so I, um, ever since, have had the Sub 10 hooked up. And it, it works. Uh, it works really well. I feel much more secure in what I'm hearing. I'm much more assured that what I'm hearing is accurate. What's your favorite thing in this room? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing in this room is my dog. Um, after that, I mean, in, in terms of audio, it honestly is the speakers. Um, and that's and not, not just because this is a promo video, but when I, when I started 
doing this myself. The first thing I, the only thing I bought <laughs> were speakers. And I bought the Atom A7Xs and yeah, that was, that was what I needed to start mixing in my mind. And I still have them today. And other things come and go. Um, interfaces and gear and computers will be upgraded now and then, you know, all that stuff. The speakers have stayed with me and they were the, the one thing I knew I needed to purchase in order to start making records on my own.